I've been running the Camp King Industries Hard Shell Rooftop Tent for over a year now. It is one of the best quality rooftop tents on the market, but it is also one of the most expensive. Is it worth the investment? This isn't gonna be one of those reviews where I run through all the specs of the rooftop tent. I believe if you want the specs, you can jump on the website anyway, price it up, everything else. I wanna share with you my experience with this rooftop tent and how it has changed the way I go camping. Set up and pack up time has just completely changed. That's how I want, what I wanna show you. That's the message I wanna get across, how it's improved my setup. Now, I wanna be honest with you, as I am in all my videos, this rooftop tent and awning was provided to me from Camp King Industries at a discounted price for me to go out, test and review it, doesn't mean this review isn't gonna be open and honest. There are things I don't like, which I am gonna mention on camera. It's not gonna stop me from telling the truth. We'll run through setup first, show you just how easy it is to set up this tent. This is the whole reason I went in this style tent. I wanted a quick, easy setup. Comes with this standard telescopic ladder. Nothing special about the ladder. Just lives in my canopy. There's two mounting hooks, one at the back here. Another one on the side, you can mount either side, but I've got the awning on the side. So I've got it here when I've got the awning open. That was one of the biggest questions I had. How do I get in the rooftop tent if the awning is open? Because it's got a 270 degree awning that comes around the back here, which blocks this main entrance. It's really simple. Get these two heavy duty latches. Never had these broken. I've never had any issues with these latches at all. I've seen a lot of other rooftop tents where they've had issues with the latches, but these have been fine. Two latches. Get it one more step. I just lean, put my knees on the step so I'm nice and balanced. Handle in the middle here. You easily just lift it up, one hand. Gas struts take over. A bungee cord that holds the canvas in nice and tight. Pull it down the bottom. I keep the poles inside here. This is literally like a two minute setup. I'm taking my time at the moment to show you guys how to do it. So you get two sets of poles. You've got little hooks right here. The bottom of this pole just slots straight into. Then there's two eyelets in your awning. So you just go up three quarters of the way with that one. Get your other pole. Same thing on this side. Nearly all the way to the top. Don't go quite to the top. Leave it a little bit loose. It's a little bit of a trick. The other pole, whack straight up in the back corner and then come through and actually go above the pole here. So you actually lock in just above it and then lock that in nice and tight. Because I found if you don't lock it in above the pole, on the spigot, if you just locked that circle piece on that like you're supposed to, on windy days, it will slide down. So you don't want that, you want it up nice and high and then it won't go anywhere. Then you can tighten these a bit more if you have to. That's it, that's the whole setup done. You have your main entrance here with the big door and the awning covering you if it's raining. So if it is raining, we'll have this door open, uh, or at least the top section, we'll show you in a minute. Otherwise, if the awning's open, we'll get in from the side there. My favorite feature that I found straight away the first night I used this rooftop tent of the awning is that it doesn't flap. You can hear a little bit on the poles, but nowhere compared to what my old soft top rooftop tents used to flap. You just keep you up at night time, the zips flapping, just everything was flapping. And this is nice and quiet at night. You get a good night's sleep. The whole reason it doesn't flap as much as other standard rooftop tents, uh, typically you get the spring poles. It is a narrow pole that actually flexes. So it goes in the rooftop tent straight in, into a hole there. Then you bend it up into the eyelet up high. And so that's actually free to move around, which allows all the canvas or whatever material they're using to just flap around. Whereas this uses proper poles, they're nice and stiff and don't go anywhere. And you can see, just how stiff the canvas is. 
I'll show you how easy it is to move the ladder around the side. I simply come in with one step, bring it in nice and close, and then it easily lifts off. I just grab the whole thing and just walk around with it. Drop it in the location, ready to go again. Nice big side doors, that's what I love too. These doors are huge. Let's jump in, have a look. You can see just how much room there really is in here. I was really worried that being a little bit narrower than the soft top rooftop tents, that it wouldn't be enough room for two people comfortably. But we so easily fit in here. And even, I can nearly, nearly stand upright. I, can, I can't quite touch the roof, putting my arm all the way up. It is that high. Roof is insulated. So that also helps uh, with condensation at night time, but don't think that you don't get condensation. It's natural that all rooftop tents will get condensation, swags, tents, everything will, you can't stop it. So to eliminate it, we um, open up the window right up the top and let air still flow through at night time. The more air you can get through here flowing through, the less the chance of condensation. At the very top here, this is the back. This is that section we leave open at night time for the air to vent through so you don't get any condensation. Um, I like that this one here does come downwards, so it means it does come down all the way, but we hardly ever have that all the way down. It's good that if you have it three quarters way up, you can still have ventilation here, even if it is raining, you may not be able to have the side windows open, just to, or the rain will come in, but at least with the awning out front, you can still have this window here down as much as you want, you will not get any rain in here at all. But having an insulated roof really helps as well. Um, helps in hot weather too, so this doesn't heat up as much. This is still really cool to touch in on hot days. And having a fabric roof, one thing I really love about it, I have my iPad, I've got a Bluetooth speaker, that's always in here, ready to go, always set up. Velcro it straight to the roof. Um, I've got a fan clip over there as well. That's always ready to go. I've got 12 volt down there. I've got, I think six USBs, two cigarette plugs, Anderson plugs, everything I can need. I've got USB plugs running all the way so we can charge both our phones in both ends. It comes with these optional canvas bags as well, which I really love. They come in very handy. So we have, my partner and I, there's two zipped bags. We have one of those each. And there's a middle one here, which Velcro is shut, which we keep just the speaker and other stuff in as well. So you've got plenty of storage room in here. The mattresses, there's two different size mattresses, mattresses you can choose. Uh, one is full length, it'll take up the entire length of the rooftop tent. But the one we've chosen is slightly shorter. We've probably got about 20, 30 mil short at the end. Gives us room if we want to put shoes or clothes or store anything we want at the end. Um, that we can keep it in here when we shut the rooftop tent. Bedding, that's one other thing we get asked heaps and heaps. We can fit as much bedding in here as we want. We have a fitted sheet, a mink blanket to go on the mattress itself. It's a 100 mil mattress. Uh, which we love. We've slept in this for three weeks straight on the road and I could have done it forever. It was so comfortable. I could have slept in it every single night. I don't need to put a mattress topper, anything on this. I, other people have, but I'm fine with it. I like it. I'm, I'm quite comfortable. So yeah, we have that fitted sheet, the mink blanket, and then we have a really, really thick doona on top as well. And I think tonight we'll even put two more blankets on top of this as well. And I could still fold it down with our pillows in here. There's no limit to how much bedding we can have in here. We haven't been able to not close it yet. There is way more storage in here than you need as well. Not only do you have your three pockets on your roof, which you can actually rip off and stick anywhere you want. There's a pocket at both sides on each side. So at the front, you have a single pocket and at the back, you have double pockets each side. So have plenty of room for your keys, phones, torches, whatever you want to store in here at night time. One touch I really loved as well. You come with this Camp King uh, canvas shoe bag. So we can keep our shoes in here at night time. And it's got clips on the end here. We just clip this on the pole outside so you don't have stinky shoes inside it. You roped up town at night time. This little fan I'll keep in here all year round. I can easily fit a couple of these, one each side. I've also already got USB ports running up along the roof that are tied in. So I just clip it up, plug it in, and it'll go all night long in the winter time. Uh, we also have an electric blanket in here too which plugs directly into our power. So we're nice and warm at night time. There's also a built-in light up top as well. The one thing we didn't like about the light, the switch for it is right up the top. And if you want to turn it on or off, you've got to pretty much stand up 
to be able to reach that switch. You've got to get up on your hands and knees. Um, so what I did, I did a little trick with the wire coming down. I just put my own little switch down near our feet there so that we can turn it on and off easily uh, without standing up. Another big reason I wanted this rooftop tent over any other rooftop tent was the fact that they use actual canvas. Um, unlike most other imported rooftop tents into the country, they don't use genuine canvas. This is proper canvas. It doesn't need two layers of it to be able to make a blackout. When I close this up in a minute, we'll see just how dark it is in here with just one layer of canvas. So you get to sleep in in the morning, unlike most other rooftop tents. Both sides and the back all have midi screens on them. So they're huge zips. So you can open that all the way to get in and out. Otherwise you get the option. It is a bit different having it open from bottom to top um, because it all bunches down the bottom. That's something you gotta get used to, but I don't mind it. Um, otherwise, if you have it the other way around, you have to roll it up each time. So I'd much rather have it down the bottom like this. You also have your canvas, which you can close as well. Look at that, you can't see through that at all now. Close the rest up and see how dark it gets. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. It's fully closed up and you can barely see me at all. You can see a little bit of light in the distance, but that is it. This is one of my favorite features. The fact that it is so dark in here. We've had plenty of sleepings in here and I love it. Having external gas struts, some people are for it and some people are against it. I believe it is an advantage. I love having them on the outside. Uh, it gives us a lot more room on the inside. It doesn't take up any mattress space at all. And everyone's worried about hitting them on branches and everything else, but I've never come close to hitting. I know where my car is. I watch it all the time. Anywhere I go close to trees, I'm watching my car. So I know if I'm going to hit on anything. And these are that strong. They are rated that high in newton meters that a lot of rooftop tents on the market need an additional pole on the inside that you need to set up afterwards to hold its roof up. In case you get strong winds, um, you need that extra pole to be able to hold the roof up. This one doesn't need anything. The gas struts are that strong We've been up uh, 50 kilometer winds. We've been in this rooftop tent and it survived. It did not come down at all. We've slept in it. It's completely fine. It can handle any kind of wind. So there's no additional support needed for this rooftop tent, which I can't say for everything else. Everyone has a different opinion on which side you put your head and your feet in these rooftop tents. Being clamshell one, uh, you, some people feel very claustrophobic putting their head up the front. Um, we prefer to put our head up here, even though some people don't like it because you've got to sort of step over with your feet over your pillows. But we watch movies quite often in here. So we've got the iPad up there. So it's a nice, easy angle for us just to watch movies up here, just chill and relax. So we much prefer to sleep in that angle. One bit of feedback I've heard from a lot of people with other brands of rooftop tents as well, is water ingress, uh, especially while they're driving. Not only while it's set up, but mainly while they're driving, water will get in under the seals here. You can see where the seals sit. That is where the rubber seal goes long. It's nowhere near the fabric. So there's no way any water can get in. I've never had a single drop of water get in this rooftop tent. This is an absolutely terrible weekend to go camping. Uh, winds 35 to 50 kilometers per hour. By the coast, a couple hundred k's away, 100 k hour winds. So it's definitely not the best weather for camping, but it's the best weather to come out and test out this rooftop tent in strong conditions. I've camped in this rooftop tent and had the awning up in these kind of conditions plenty of times in the past and I know it can handle it. So I don't have an issue setting the rooftop tent and the awning up in this wind. After testing this for a year and starting out in a budget rooftop tent, Adventure King's rooftop tent, it was great for the money, it got us out there. Uh, we ended up having issues but that's what you're going to get with a budget rooftop tent. After that we upgraded to a 23-0 rooftop tent. Now that was a much better quality rooftop tent, um, it was probably double the price. Uh, but we had the same issues, not quality wise, but it was a soft top rooftop tent and we just didn't like that. Pack up and set up each time uh, was between five to 10 minutes. Whereas this here is about 30 seconds to one minute. That's all it is. So when you were traveling every day on the road, those precious minutes, especially when it's raining and you got to pack up in the rain, if you can only do it in one minute, that saves you getting completely drenched outside. With the soft top rooftop tent, not only was it the pack up and set up time, it was the fact that we couldn't fit our bedding in the rooftop tent. We could fit one thin blanket and that was it. You couldn't put your pillows, you couldn't put a doona, nothing else in there. Otherwise, when you go to fold it in half, it just wouldn't work. You could not, you'd stress the zip that much. We broke several straps, trying to pull it down 
and lock it tight to be able to close that zip again. It just cannot handle any bedding. Whereas this one here, it may be one of the heaviest rooftop tents on the market at 90 kilos, um, but we can fit 100% of our bedding in it. We can still close that even with our pillows, like everything in there. It doesn't matter how much bedding we put in there. We can still close that rooftop tent, which we couldn't do previously. And which means that's a lot less room we need to take up in the car, allow for bedding. The fact that it weighs 90 kilos actually puts a lot of people off. They don't want that much weight up on their roof, which is understandable, especially if they're gonna do four wheel driving. You may as well just throw a swag up there or a soft top rooftop tent or a hard shell that is half the thickness. Now that's gonna be 50, 60 kilos compared to 90 kilos. But there are big drawbacks with that too that you have to consider that they don't tell you when you're looking at those products. For example, I'm not gonna mention names. Several of those rooftop tents don't even come with floors. They come with slats on the bottom and that's it, the slats and then your mattress. So it is a very uncomfortable sleep. You don't even have a solid floor and you cannot fit uh, any more than one or two little blankets in there either. Either. So there's not much benefit. Sure, it's more slimline. Yeah, it is more aerodynamic because it is lower on your roof and your center of gravity is lower too uh, because it's less weight and it's lower. But then you're sacrificing not being able to fit that bedding. And I don't do tough tracks at my car. My car is set up for touring. so. I don't care about that extra weight saving um, or the less wind resistance. I'd much rather have a quick setup and pack up when I get to camp. That is more important to me. I always wanted a hard shell rooftop tent, but I never thought I'd be able to fit a hard shell rooftop tent on my dual cab ute. Being as that the axle is right here, there's a lot of weight back behind that axle. And I didn't want 90 kilos plus a roof rack, which is about 30 kilos. Uh, then the awning, which is another 21 kilos, I think it is, um, plus my shower awning, solar panel, uh, recovery boards up top. All that is over like 150 kilos. I was worried about having that much weight over that axle. So it was quite a process trying to get a custom roof rack made up that would even support this rooftop tent. As they tell you when you're going to buy one of these tents, you cannot have more than 300 mil overhang that is unsupported. And this canopy is only 1.5 meters long. That means the rest of this would have all been unsupported and nobody else on the market made a roof rack that would support this far out um, without sort of bars going up higher and it wasn't gonna suit that rooftop tent. So I had to get this custom made, but I'm so glad I did. It turned out so well, everything just turned out exactly the way I wanted it and I'm so happy how it's turned out. It just completely changed the whole car. I can't tell you how much I love it now. Speaking of measurements, I quite often get asked, I'm quite tall, am I gonna fit in this rooftop tent? I'm worried I'm not gonna have the leg room. This is 2.3 meters long from end to end. And like I said, my mattress is probably 20, 30 mil shorter than the end. And I'm six foot and I can fit in there. So anyone should fit in this rooftop tent. Like I said, you can get the extended mattress as well. That'll go the whole length. We also originally slept with our heads up this end before we had the tablet in there for watching movies. Uh, I was quite concerned uh, that I'd feel claustrophobic having my head down the lower end. But you can actually see in that triangle there how much room you actually have. So your head comes nowhere near it. Even with your pillow in there, you don't feel claustrophobic at all, which is something that surprised me. Honestly, the main reason I went with this rooftop tent and the awning is because I love supporting Australian businesses and I want to promote more Australian businesses. This is a small family owned business uh, up in Brisbane. They've started the business from scratch themselves, which I love. I love the, that battle of story and they've done fantastic. Their products, there is nothing better on the market and you only get that from Australian companies. There's only two or three, maybe three companies in the whole Australia that build rooftop tents in Australia. Every other company imports their product, slaps their name on it, and sells it. And you just don't get the same quality. You cannot get the same quality as it's, even when it comes down to any issues, for some reason, if you ever had an issue with an Australian product, you know you can ring them up and say, look, this is broken, I need this part. And they're gonna have that in stock or get it really easily. Whereas if you have a warranty issue with an imported product, you won't have to wait six months for them to get that product into the country again, especially Last few years with the C word and people having major issues getting products into the country, you don't want that. You want instant, you don't want to be not be able to take your car out for six months waiting for a product to have it fix your rooftop tent. So the fact that it's Australian made, every piece of material 
product component, the whole thing is an Australian product. The canvas is 100% Australian. Everything on it is 100% Australian made. So being Australian made is the biggest pro for me personally, but it is a con for other people, particularly when it comes to cost. Being Australian made, you're paying for Australian materials and Australian labor, which isn't cheap compared to importing uh, products straight from China. So building products in Australia, you cannot compete with other competitors. There's just no way. They have to still make a profit. So this product isn't for everyone, and I understand that. I started out with King's Gear 230, so I'm not gonna say this is for everyone. And I would not recommend this to everyone either. If you're just starting out in camping, there's no way you need to spend this much money on a rooftop tent. Buy the budget gear first. I don't believe when everyone says, buy once, buy right, you may go get out camping and not like it at all. So there's no point blowing a heap of money or saving for several years. There's no point staying at home for several years because you have been told you need the best of everything before you can go out there. So start with the budget gear. If you like camping, then slowly upgrade bit by bit and maybe one day you might wanna get an investment like this because that's what you've got to think of it as, it's an investment. Uh, it's gonna last you for years and years to come and you will not have the troubles you get with those budget um, products. So that's why I'm happy that I've got a quality rooftop tent now that I'm not gonna have issues with. People may think it's strange having a 1989 Hilux uh, with a rooftop tent in the morning that's worth more than my car. But same thing, it's an investment. I'm only gonna have this car a few more years and I'm gonna upgrade cars, which means this rooftop tent in the morning just goes straight to my next car. I don't sell it with the car. This is gonna last me for years and years. One more thing that I never would have thought of prior to running different sort of rooftop tents uh, previously with the soft top rooftop tents, uh, when we were at camping and we get a thunderstorm coming through, I was never 100% sure that we would be grounded to the ground from the ladder. Whether if lightning hits the rooftop tent, being a big piece of metal up in the air higher than everything else, whether it would conduct electricity and we get the lightning strike directly on the rooftop tent, having that ladder touch in the ground directly, whether that would earth the car um, and we would get electrocuted. So I was always worried about that. We several times had to jump back in the car, um, just concerned about not being able to lift up that ladder. So, because that was, it come out the back here and it was dropped down. So you could not remove that ladder because that was supporting half the weight of the rooftop tent. Uh, a couple months ago, we were coming back from Western Australia. We were along the coast and we've been fighting this storm the whole day trying to get in front of it. And by the time we finally got to camp by the beach, uh, the storm caught up with us and it was the worst lightning we'd ever seen. So. The fact that we had rubber tires on the ground and the ability to lift up this ladder from inside there and put the ladder up in there with us, we felt completely safe. We knew that even if lightning did hit us, that our tires, we weren't grounded to the ground. So there's no way anything could happen to us. Being that it is an investment and worth so much, I make sure I take really, really good care of this rooftop tent. I want it to last me for years. So whenever I get home from a weekend and it's been raining or we have our condensation on the outside, I make sure I'll leave it the rest of the day set up. I let it air right out with the windows open and let it dry right out before I pack it away. There's no way I would want to get any sort of close it up while it's still damp and get condensation in there. Um, I'll get a regular clean as well. You've got to really look after them. It's a lot of money. You want it to last for years. Uh, one other thing people are concerned about, they're worried if I pack this up in the rain and close the lid down, is my bedding going to get wet? Um, I've got to tell you, personally, myself, uh, we've closed the zips up, closed it down, and I have not had a single drop of water get in on my bedding. So we've opened it up that afternoon at our next destination, and we still had dry bedding to hop into. That was one thing I, I was actually concerned about. I knew the water wouldn't get in past the seals, but having water already on the wet rooftop tent, closing it up together, whether it would eventually leak through and onto my bedding, but luckily I had nothing at all. I want to show you how quick it is to pack up. Now, like I said, five to 10 minutes previously, uh, not including our awning. We had the Darchi awning as well with the walls and everything on it. It used to take us about half an hour each time to pack up camp, which sucked. It's gone down about five minutes now total with the awning, rooftop tent, everything, five minutes. So it's pretty bloody easy. I'll open up this zip. Just enough to get the poles in. Unclip the shoe bag. Throw that inside. These poles, I forgot to mention, are from Superpeg. So that's another Australian company as well. Like I said, everything is supporting Australian businesses. Uh, oh, 
One other thing I didn't mention about their company, they're not after, out after themselves either. They want to help Australia, other Australian businesses grow. They even organize this event where they encourage other Australian businesses to come along and promote their products. So they're not trying to shortchange anyone. They want to help all Australian businesses grow together. And that's that's the way it should be. That's what I want to, the message I want to get across too. Everyone needs to support Australian businesses. They're a lot more expensive. So they're not in everyone's budget, but when you can, please do it. So let's throw the pegs straight in. So easy to pack up. Then you grab the bungee cord, put it halfway up, halfway up. There's a strap that goes right up the top here. You just grab the strap, one hand, grab the handle, give it one little pull each side, and it will go straight down. Now, when you first set this up the first couple of times, the canvas hasn't got its memory yet. It's brand new canvas. It's this canvas, you would not believe how thick it really is compared to other rooftop tents on the market. So it doesn't want to hold its shape at the moment. So for the first couple of times you do it, it is quite difficult to get it to pack up correctly. But after a few times, it gets its memory and it will just naturally want to go back into the resting position. So it gets easier and easier to pack away. This comes down itself. Then you have your two clips. Done. How easy is that? All, all the bending is still in here. Everything's in here, ready to go again. You can see when it's packed up, it has raised the profile of the Hilux considerably, but I wouldn't have it any other way personally. But half of that is just the roof rack itself. The rooftop tent doesn't start until here, but that thickness doesn't bother me at all. The fact that I can get all my bedding in there makes it all worth it. If I had the budget to buy any rooftop tent on the market myself, paying full price, I still would have bought this rooftop tent. The fact that I'm supporting an Australian business and you cannot beat this quality. Honestly, I'm not jerking a chain here. I honestly cannot fault. Uh, besides, if they had another 12 volt socket on both, if they had a 12 volt socket on both sides, uh, bring that light switch down. There's not many other negatives that I can find in this rooftop tent. I've been using it for a year. I can't find anything else. There's just nothing for that price range. You expect perfection, and it is. They've done a bloody good job creating this rooftop tent. Losing light really fast, unfortunately. I love camping down here. Now, if you guys have got any questions at all, don't hesitate, leave a comment. I'll answer your questions 100% honest in the comments. Like I said, even though this was provided for me at a discounted price, I will always be honest in all my videos. You have to be, you have to be transparent. So any questions, fire away. Um, if you found this video helpful, leave a like. And even if you think your friends might enjoy this as well, share it with your friends as well. But thanks for watching this video, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.